Hey everyone, got a short video here on how Revit dimensions work. So go ahead and launch Revit. And I'll get you on this screen. And once you're here, we're going to start a new file just for a quick demo. This time we're going to run with the Imperial Architectural Template and click OK to launch that. Now, if we've ever started the residential template, you'll notice the the main difference is over in the project browser. Um, we have there's a lot more levels that are automatically inserted or created for you. Uh, the architectural template is a little bit more generic, and just gives us a few to get started. And then we can just add them as we need them to. But um, in this demo, we're just going to be working all in level one anyway because it's just a quick video on how dimensions are placed and how you edit them. So let's get started with a wall. So we can go up and click on that wall tool. And you can see all the ribbon changes for modifying tools and we have an option bar, things we can select about that wall. And we could also change options in that wall down below in the properties box. So right now we have a generic eight inch. I'm gonna switch it to a generic six inch because that's kind of typical exterior wall size. It's not perfect and we would do more detail later, but for the moment, generic six inch. And I can either change the height here, I can change it here, same thing. Um, typical wall height on a main floor house is going to be either 8 or 10 feet. And we can just go 10 to keep it simple. So I hit 10, enter. And that changes that so it's ready to create 10 uh, walls that are 10 feet tall. And when I draw, they're going to be referencing the wall center line. And we'll kind of see as we go how that works. So each click, right now it's set to line. So each click is an endpoint of a wall, and we'll keep this. We'll go with just a nice simple box shape. Now, if I want to draw that a little faster, I could have gone up and selected the rectangle tool, and one click for one corner and one click for the opposite, and that does the same thing. Also, escape cancels your tools like two or three times on the escape key. It's just the easiest way to cancel. Um, I'm going to go down to my view settings quick because I just noticed that things look uh, very, you know, kind of plain. So I'm going to make the scale a little bit bigger to show more detail down the road. Change the level of detail to fine. And I like it with shaded on. Just gives a little contrast on the screen. I'm zooming in with the roller. I'm also going to toggle the thin lines tool. And what that does is going to change these. Uh, lines that define the wall from thick to thin automatically and that's only applies to the computer screen if we would ever print these we actually have to change them for print settings later on with that set now I can do a dimension and I go to the annotate tab and align dimension is pretty much the one we use all the time I know you'd think but you'd think linear but align is just as easy and we'll use angled once in a while too aligned and right now when I look at this option bar for the dimension tool right around the, the tab says modify or place dimensions uh, it's gonna look for wall center lines so what that means is when your mouse is hovering over the wall it's trying to click and reference the center line and we can do that click once there click once on the other and then a third click to place escape to cancel and that's how you simply place a dimension. Now where we select will change a little bit. Um, but on a generic wall, you're really only going to be clicking the outside, middle, or center just to get things started. Now if I want to change this dimension, I highlight one of the walls that are controlled by this dimension. And what's goofy in Revit is it would seem like it's this 20, the wall that's directly under the dimension. But the reality is it's either the left or the right one that these extension lines are connected to. Um, a personal preference is, you know, I try to kind of leave a couple walls as my zero points. In this demo, it really doesn't matter. Just click one wall or the other. And then once you, act, once you highlight the wall you want to move, the dimensions that are connected to it, you'll see turn blue or active so that you can click on them. And now I can make that a 20-foot wall. 20 enter and you can see it move so let me repeat that on the other way so again align dimension this time I'm going to just for example switch this to uh, a wall face 
and it's going to snap to either face. So I'll do the outside to outside. And rarely do we try to click in the corners. You kind of see where I'm clicking out further down on the wall. Outside. And then a third click to place. Escape twice to cancel the tool. Highlight the bottom wall this time. And you got to be careful. There's also temporary dimensions that now will start to show up. Because those are the temporary dimensions that when you were drawing were helping you approximate, get the approximate size that you wanted. Um, so I got to make sure I'm clicking on the the solid black line dimension, that number. And this time we're going to make this one, let's go uh, 15 space 6. So that'll mean 15 feet, 6 inches, hit enter. And when I click off, that temporary one will disappear and you can still see our permanent dimension there. Okay. Uh, you can change locations of the extension lines after you start. So for example, maybe I wanted this the center line one to also be on the outside. If I just click on the dimension line or the extension line, it brings it up kind of in an edit mode and there's these little dots on there. And the, the bottom dot just lets you kind of drag out how much extension line gap you want. But the other dot will say move the witness line and if you click on it it toggles it between all the references that this extension line can connect to. And therefore, and you can even return it back to where you had it, but this is a way to modify where that's referencing. Go on the other side, I'll make that match. Now everything's on the outside. You can see now it changed that dimension a little bit, 20 foot 6 inches. And if I needed to change that back, I would just again highlight that wall and go 20, enter, and there's brings it back to 20 feet and moves the wall accordingly. Okay, that's a generic wall. Relatively simple. So let me slide over to the other one I made. Or if you didn't if you didn't make a second one, you could delete this one at this point and quickly redraw another square. On this one, I'm going to highlight one wall. And when you click on it, right, when, when nothing is selected, you just see properties of the view. Once you left click on something, your properties window changes to whatever that object is. And if I want to deselect something, I just click in the blank spaces. And so you deselect. Anyway, highlight my wall. I can change it now from a generic to a wall that has more detail. Next, we'll just go to the top. We'll call this. Um, we got we got all kinds of options here. Let's just do brick on metal studs. Exterior brick on metal studs. Well, if I zoom in, lots of layers now. So we have a brick layer that's red, an air gap layer probably that's white. We have plywood or sheathing on the outside of our stud layer, which is gray. In this case, it's metal studs, but if the label just is whatever you need it to be, it's a stud layer. And then on the inside of the house, we'd have sheetrock that you would paint and have the finished exterior on. So let's say I want to change all those walls to that same one. So again, I hover, I can click, and go back to my prop properties or type selector. I believe is actually above the properties. Uh, brick on metal stud, exterior brick on metal stud, change that. Repeat again, brick on metal stud, and one more time brick on metal stud. I'm pretty sure there's a shortcut. Let me just experiment really quick. Wall. You can just watch this quick. Oops. I meant the rectangle tool. Generic. If I hold on, if I hover over one wall and hit tab, yep, it'll loop select or chain select. Then I click. All of them are now selected and I can change them all at one time. And that would have been slick to remember about a minute ago. Anyway, both options. All right, so now dimensioning this. Annotate tab. Align dimension. I look at my options here. It's going with wall faces. This time we're going to do something called face of core. Face of core. And the core of this wall is the metal stud. Okay, it still wants to select the center line of that core, so you just have to be careful. It's very common to have to zoom in. And 
the core is a label that we create when we modify these walls and or create them. So I can click on that outside of the stud. Remember, this is the center of the house. So the outside of the stud when building to outside of stud. And I move that over and the third click to place again. So that's all the same. And then I would just highlight one of these walls. Remember, looking at the dark black dimension line, not the light blue. You know, just make that uh, 15 space 6 for 15 feet 6 inches. Align dimension, still face of core, that's good. And that's actually a very common thing we use because the outside of the stud is often the, is the reference for where you pour the basements, the basement walls, or the foundation walls. That's why that face of core is a very important reference when building homes. So click the reference, click the reference, click the place, and then I highlight a wall, activates a dimension. Uh, you might have thought there was no temporary, but it's actually on the bottom, so it's just easier to not get confused. And I can highlight it, 20, enter, click off to deactivate it. And that should give us two structures that are, move that over a little closer, fundamentally dimension the same but clearly a little bit different in size because of the detail of these walls. But generic's a good way to start when you're just kind of trying to get initial design concepts. Uh, once you start getting into detailed builds and you have all these walls with information in them and you get a dimension you like, you can even actually lock them so they don't accidentally move on you. And if you click on this, you'll see a lock symbol and the computer's trying to tell, hey, we can't move that. So that can be a useful tool. Um, Sometimes a little frustrating if you got a lot of things going on. You got to figure out which one's locked so you can move something, but usually more helpful than not. Uh, the core reference I was talking about. So if I click on this wall and I go to edit the type of the wall, you know, that's how you edit the structure of the wall. And right here is structure. I click on this button for edit. You can see all the layers that are making up this wall. And I can even preview it right there. And you can see there's layers that define the core boundary. And it's really subtle. If I zoom in, it, it's actually a green line. If I switch back, it's a, yeah, maybe it's not highlighted. I guess maybe it's just always green where the core boundary is. But these are layers that essentially have a zero thickness but define a reference point inside that wall for us because it's an important thing during building. Go ahead and cancel out of that. Cancel out of this again. And that's a really quick overview on how dimensions work. Okay.